So, Doctor James, <laughs> what do you want I'm a magic? <laughs> what do you want a magic pill for? An onion breath from your lunch you just had that now you're breathing my way. <laughs> those, those were fresh onions. Those were fresh onions. A magic pill, man. Gosh, if we could just bottle that up. I just want one that I can digest anything and it goes straight to my biceps. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think a theme that's going to come up, even as we think about it, is if I could have a pill that I got something for nothing. No, well, sure. Money for nothing. If I could Money for nothing, eat my cake and have it for free. to you, if I could eat and it goes straight to my biceps, I didn't have to work out. I didn't have to, you know, to, to take a pill of the biochemistry of fasting without actually having to go through 24, 48, well, 72 but hours. Fu- but it's funny for you to say that because there are some things that, I, I mean, if you got, if you only pick one, that, that would be the thing. If you could only like, what's the priority? Because when I think I, I'm okay, I mean, I enjoy my exercise. So to have to exercise to get the biceps or the lungs or the weight loss, you know, whatever, that one I'm okay with, I'm going to go with another one that I don't like working for like a magic pill. So I never have to, so look you at never fun. have to meditate. Yes. So you could just get the effect of 20 minutes of meditation every day. Yes. I want the matrix where they jack me in and (laughs) goes boom. And I just got got the benefit of 30 minutes of mountaintop Tibetan meditation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, this is that limitless pill now. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. It's, it, it's so intriguing. If I took a pill, though, my, because the other, other side of that is what is the symptom that bothers you the most? And I would, I would say joints and stiffness. Yeah, I guess that's why I was going to digestion. I mean, so I have done, so last week I did three days of no, no, I did four days of no coffee, alcohol, and I had been doing soda, like diet soda, just, you know, mixing in a, in a, with seltzer and stuff like that. And it was after our, our talk with, let's see, this is episode 59. Was it 57 maybe with a D, uh, Arizini on the T? Oh, on the T, She's talking yeah. about uh-huh. the big gut. Thing. Just, and she talked about soda. Yeah. R- any soda. It- so I'm, I'm 10 days off coffee. Or what did I tell you today? 11, 11 days off coffee, soda. Um, I did three day, or four days without alcohol, but then over New Year's did that. And then now I'm a couple days and here's what happens. Uh, here, here's the biggest thing that I've seen. I, need, I, I forgot to tell you uh, and to show you my heart, my resting heart rate plummets with no alcohol at night. How interesting. Like 10 beats a minute. I'm a team, 10 beats. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. That would, uh, or 10 beats. What is it? Uh, per, Be- beats per minute. Per, per minute. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll go from. Yeah. Because we were, we had conjectured about that in the past because you as a more in shape person than me was about 10 beats higher, higher. Or, or, or more. So I've been, I, I predict that in the next few days, uh, my resting heart rate will drop under 50 finally, which it never, it, it hasn't. I mean, that's like a, perfect you know time time but, but i think it will just from alcohol caffeine maybe the combination thereof soda it all have, the above i have done some caffeine and tea uh i have done you? some caffeine yeah, I've been doing tea <laughs> with a lot of cream or eggnog <laughs> uh, to try to get started. Okay. All right. We're going off tangent. So a pill. So I, you know, I wanted to say that like kind of what is that primary thing? And so we got some, and of course, as, as people have listened to this show and no functional medicine, there's no one answer. Uh, but I, I did want you to do your best to address, okay, for this ailment, what historically have you seen are primary causations and and treatments oh i i get it so somebody's gonna say uh, chronic this or or chronic uh, kevin helm right away i know kevin uh he said chronic headaches well i mean again you could say you have no you have to know a thousand things to be able to hone in but historically when you hear chronic headache where does your mind first go on causation so i'm smiling okay because i like this question okay i i just i like the theme of this of 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 this um, podcast that we're doing it, that, that you thought of that question. I think that's a great idea. And it's going to, so people are going to write in and <clears throat> I think it's one of my favorite things to do is to somebody say, gosh, I've got chronic X, Y, Z. And automatically you think, Oh, it could be this. It could be that. Think this, think that. And, and it's so frustrating and headaches is one of those. And when you go and Google headaches, there's 
almost like you said, an infinite amount of what could be related to this and it could be related to that. And people famously will think of their caffeine or their eyeglasses or things like that. So from a headache perspective, I would say, all right, this is, this is a hard one because it's one of those things where there's lots and lots of con contributors. And of course, I don't have him to ask questions. Well, do you get a headache in this situation or that situation? Uh, but if somebody's got chronic headaches, then almost all the time. So we're going to go sort of basic. Yeah. And I would say, what's his ergonomics? Like this right now, is he sitting all the time? Is he mousing all the time? Which leads to the tension headache in your neck. Okay. I can speak a little bit because I, I do know him. He has uh, his primary profession was going out to like oil rigs. Uh, I, I, if I'm saying that, you know, the oil, whatever, yeah, out on the Gulf, I mean, he's a mechanic. Or... Well, I don't know. Or, or I think even or land North based, Dakota, like, yeah, wherever yeah. they're uh -huh. doing them. And he's a mechanic, uh -huh. those high paid, makes a lot of money yep. doing that. So he's out in the elements. He's in Kansas, Oklahoma. Okay. So we've had several, you wouldn't know this, but we've had several oil guys through here. Oh, we had one guy who was going out to the Gulf and out in the ocean yeah. and several of the North Dakota guys. Um, so in that line of work, and they drive a lot, there's, there's almost always a lot of driving. Yeah. The, the, the shift work, it's like you got a job to do and you leave your family. So you tend to work 12 hours. And then, so I'd say I stress, you, caffeine. Oh, okay. So caffeine on that for people who have the chronic headaches, because then you get stuck into the cycle that, well, gosh, coffee makes me feel better. But it is also the thing that makes you feel bad 24 hours later when you're due for your next coffee. Well, this is like back to, again, I think it was episode 57, if not 58, with a D. And she was using coffee because it was only to help her go to the bathroom. But then she's dependent on coffee to go to the bathroom. Which is better than not going to the bathroom. That is true. <laughs> but at some point, the wise person will think, gosh, I am not born with a deficiency of coffee. Something has yeah. gone on here. And so a headache person is, you know, I'm not born with a deficiency of ibuprofen or aspirin or Tylenol or caffeine or soda or any of those things. And like we've said in the past, you are born with a deficiency of sleep, of good food, of good nutrition, of water. Of, so chronic headaches, ergonomically, now he might also, if he's, you know, so ergonomically, the, the, the chief contributor is one of these things where people are mousing. In a, in a position that puts stress and strain on their neck. So you're literally, I was going to say, so you're literally talking pot posture. posture. So how are they? Mm -hmm. so, like I've got, oh, I can't see it in the camera, but I've got my fancy ergonomic, whatever chair with all the things. And I, but I was able to get it into point. Like this is the best possible sitting posture. It doesn't mean I'm always in that, but I thought if I can help it. And then of course uh, you and I both have the standing desks, but see on the standing desk, I, I probably couldn't do this one because my weird torso of being tall in my torso. So my standing desk, you know, like this would still be too low. I have to hunch to get it up to here to where my, I can mouse with my elbow on the table. Yeah. Was the, and that really helped me out. And prior to that, I had talked with Stefan, our, our, our chiropractor that's here. And, and he talks to people all the time about ergonomics. That's he he his, came in the other day. Oh, did he evaluate adjusted. you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I like that. So, so chronic headaches, I'm first of all thinking, you know, what's the caffeine intake? What's the ergonomic situation? And then after that, it might get a little bit more, you know, problematic as to, well, could it be this and could it be that? One thing I've been thinking about more recently is magnesium. And I would say it this way, like we talked about in our supplement stuff, that almost everybody is low in omegas and vitamin D. Magnesium is getting very close to being on that list of insufficiency in magnesium headaches is definitely so when people come in and if there's migraines chronic headaches almost always i'd say well let's just put in some magnesium see what happens here um gosh you know magnesium that's what i have used to help with foot cramping which i'll have like in, in, uh -huh. in bed have foot cramping and uh maybe, man, I can't maybe kevin's having or he's having brain cramping brain cramping no. yeah so yeah. magnesium, there's three salts or there's three formulation groups. So there's the kind that helps with constipation. Yeah. So mag citrate, sometimes magnesium oxide, but I would say magnesium citrate. So if anybody's, you know, moving slow, take some magnesium. Isn't that the citrate. basic cheap? Yeah. Cheapest stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
easy to get. Calm is one of the brands and calm is, is indicative of the fact that it's the exact same stuff that's over here on the constipation aisle, but this is on the aisle of helping me go to sleep and calm down. And it's like, well, why is that? Because magnesium is often used in a lot of different areas in the body. I mean, it is, uh, the other area is muscle though. So heart palpitations and your heart's a muscle and cramping. So that twitchiness or quiveriness mm -hmm. or just cramping. And so that group of magnesium would be the magnesium glycinate or chelate or tarate. Uh, the, there's other salts and those tend to be absorbed better out of the gut. So they don't cause a, con a uh, they don't pull fluid into the gut to help with constipation like mag citrate would. And then if somebody's got headaches or can't sleep or maybe depression or anxiety or things like that, and, and we have a suspicion of low magnesium or we measure it, then you want to take a look at magnesium three and eight. Um, yeah. So I I've heard you mention that. I have no idea. Do you even carry that here? Mm -hmm. So that's the Optimag Neuro that we have uh, here. And in the stores, the one that's coming to is the Gero brand is called MagMind. Okay. And that would be magnesium three and eight. So if somebody's got headaches all the time, all the time, I'd say I'd definitely play around with magnesium as well. Man, I, t I hope, yeah, everybody hears that on magnesium because you like that, me needing it for cramping. And if I started off on the first one, the magnesium, what was the first the level? citrate? Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. I don't need that because my stools are loose enough. So I don't need any That's more right. loose. That's right. So that was. And that confuses a lot of people. Yeah. They're like, oh, I tried that, but yeah. it just makes me upset. Yeah. And so. And even on the magnesium side, if you do, some people, let's say you're taking that middle group on the muscle side and it still makes you a little loose. To those people, I'd say, you know, just start low, go slow, push on it a little bit. Try to train in your body to where you can take a little bit more without that bowel response. And do, do all humans need to do that? You know, we've had a whole several shows on, on supplements and... <clears throat> So for a headache person, I'd say, yeah. And even if you do the mag mind or magnesium three and eight, and it tends to cause some looseness over here, I'd say, okay, we'll start with a lower dose and just titrate up. Yeah. Slowly. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, good. You know, I, I'll never forget a friend of mine whose wife had chronic migraines and she also had a significant addiction to Coca-Cola. Oh yeah. And, and that's, that's common. And, and we smile and we laugh, but in the military, during those years that that happened all the time and people are just they're like please don't take my coke away don't take my coffee away just don't and or even harder is they will be on a on a system of don't take my ibuprofen away yeah and so and this might be him as well is i i i didn't say this at the front but i'm a little bit if he's having every people who have everyday headaches especially if they take medicines oftentimes it has now become a rebound and so just like with the caffeine, it's the, it's the fact that the ibuprofen is going out of your system that triggers a rebound headache. Oh. So rebound headaches. And, and I look at them and I'm saying, I'm so sorry. You're like on a drug withdrawal at this point. Yeah, you, you, just, you just need a week of headaches. Yeah. But we'll, we'll usually say if they're not a caffeine, we'll say take some caffeine. Or if it's a caffeine person getting off of vaccine, we'll say take some ibuprofen but have sure. two weeks where you know you're going to stop. Yeah. A week, half the people get through it in a week. Some people are going to need two weeks, but it'll stop. But it, it, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, there's are bad headaches. Okay, next one. <laughs> here's here's a, a very complex one. IBS. <laughs> Donna, IBS. She, she also had seasonal allergies that seem to be constant year round. So we can, we can go after two. That's two big ones there. I mean, IBS is... I mean, well, let's, I think IBS is a good one. I mean, and, I, well, yeah, it's a good one, but it, it's one of those where I did not used to, it's kind of like as a kid, I wasn't used to other kids having food allergies. Now they all do, you know, IBS. I didn't know what IBS was. It seemed like it's well, like many things it's, you know, it's like brain fog. We didn't used to right. hear that. Now it's IBS. And it almost feels like who doesn't say that they have IBS to some degree. I mean, most do. I don't think well, you do, but most people I, no I, I i don't think i do but i would say everybody's on the spectrum of sure. the potential of of irritation so where i'd start with ibs it is now formally a diagnosis like icd 10 code of k 63 something and it's just unfortunate because think about the word 
What does IBS stand for? Irritable bowel syndrome. So you go to the doctor, say, doc, my bowels are irritated. And what do they tell you you have? A leaky gut? I don't know. No, they, they say, you? I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you have irritable bowel oh, syndrome. Okay. okay. Right? Hey, well, it's just a nonsense hey, well, diagnosis. No, but I do have a, I was going to ask the question though, as far as gut, because when I hear somebody say IBS, I think, so do you have problems down here, you know, pooping and is it your bowels or is it your gut? I mean, is that a fair... Cause I, I don't, I don't think of myself as having, I think I have gut issues. Yeah. So, so are, mean, you gonna, are you going to clump them together? IBS is bowel. Well, IBS gut, is, is either going to, you're either IBS D or IBS C or IBS mixed. Okay. Diarrhea, constipation or mixed. The classic one but, is. But what about the person who just has bloating and rumbling may not have bowel problems. Right. So higher up in the GI tract and they're more gassy, more bloaty, more, you know, might have a bowel movement once a day, everything is fine, no constipation, no diarrhea, but I still have a, a sense of gurgly, something's not right there. And, and I would say, you know, the GI tract starts with your mouth, ends yeah. with your anus. So it's at what point do you want to distinguish it out? And again, that's the problem with the diagnosis of IBS is too general. Yeah, it's just a, it's in America and in American healthcare system, we have all of these syndromic now diagnoses. Yeah, right. Chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah. Irritable so we got all these labels syndrome. too, which I think, cause when I hear about this one, I think IBS, I tend to put it also in there with leaky gut as far as just a terminology thrown at you got stuff, problems going on here. And yeah, unfortunately leaky gut has lost. It, it gained in prominence and now it's so common it's losing in its specificity. Oh. So intestinal term permeability is is the word that we would use and it is not as far as i know today it's not an icd-10 code so it's not recognized as a definable diagnosis that icd-10 well so, I was gonna, so it's probably going to be thrown in if you're describing it to a regular doctor that's ibs yes it, that's what i mean it's a trash can diagnosis okay <clears throat> is if somebody somebody can say anything from i'm a little gassy i'm a little gurgly i have stomach pain i have bloaty pain, I have constipation, I have diarrhea. Well, you just have IBS. Yeah. And it's, it's very, very common. It's got to be the most, most common reason. One of the most common reasons for a referral to a gastroenterologist, they roll their eyeballs a lot because it's just frustrating because what are you going to do? Right. It's uh, here's back to that pill question is, could I just have a pill for this? And there are pills for that now. And the category of those pills are guess what? They are SSRIs. They're antidepressants. Really? that are that now have FDA uh, indication approval for IBS indicating the 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 in the the dovetailing of your brain gut so they're addressing it from a stress response essentially right okay, that I wasn't somebody's GI system is messed up and somebody have as a trigger for that uh, a stressed out response yeah. like on on their mind gut mind body connection if they're stressed out their body is feeling that like for me if you put me in stress i'm gonna hold it in my neck just that yeah i'm gonna hold my yeah, shoulder that, yeah that tension and, and and then i'll you know but then i do think it affects my digestion my and and for <clears throat> and a lot of people are going to be a you know it affects a little bit of everything so it, it does but then but we're, but we're back to that kind of that big thing of we could do, you and i could take two things that we're sensitive to, to uh, culprits. I don't know what you want to call it to two, two things and take them in and they're going to manifest differently. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm going to have the trots and you, you're going to have a I headache have a sore neck or, or whatever, a headache, yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever. So we're talking about, so in here, you know, IBS. And again, this is that thing that's so unfair. You don't know Donna. I don't know mm -hmm. Donna. And uh, what do you do? But if you have to throw a, uh, or no, not if you got a shotgun and answer, okay. What are the, pro again, primary, causation yeah so number one we're going to say what are you putting in your gut right right so so certainly down that nutrition pathway and if people have the gas ability constipation diarrhea the kind of symptoms that we just roll off the tongue that get lumped into an, to an ibs i'd say nutrition is going to be number one um in terms of just get rid of processed food just the biggies you know well name them I yeah mean, well, I, I, well from that perspective fast food so uh fast food in in the sense of of those kinds of restaurants well so let's go to the um food rules. do i have to name those two? no 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 <laughs> food rules by michael paul and we talk about it a lot we used to give it away to patients here and um it's a little book you can read it in 30 minutes it's funny and it's it'll stick with you because he 
says it whimsically, uh, whatever, like if you get it through a window, if you get your food through it, it's not actually food. So he, he does a big, uh, it's not a big description. He does some basic descriptions of what is food. And that's one of them. If your grandmother can't pronounce it or your kid can't pronounce it, it is not food. It's chemicals, it's preservatives, whatever. So there you go. Right. So you're if saying you, if, if you're you buying it, it in a gas station, if you're buying it, exactly. Yeah. If you're, if you're not buying it from the, the outer walls, walls of the grocery, the grocery store. where it's the produce, the meat, the uh, dairy, I guess too, which, but the dairy is going to be on well, your d- Dairy is food for sure. But dairy sent it because of other reasons. It, it is high because the next thing out of my mouth uh, after get rid of or reduce the processed food uh, side of things would be consider food sensitivities. Dairy, gluten being the most common. Well, so yeah. So, uh, well, go, so hit those, uh, the primary culprits, the primary culprits, Triggers. dairy, gluten, sugar, D- dairy, gluten, <clears throat> excuse me, corn and soy. Okay. The ne- those are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, okay. apocalypse, right? Like the, and the reason is not because God messed up when he made a cow, but we have commodified We've, we've, we've created the industrialized food production system. So, yeah. so I heard it said once this, oh, this was Peter Atia. You know, if, if, if your goal is to um, optimize food production through amount, price, convenience, and portability, then the SAD, what's the SAD? The SAD diet? Darn. The standard American diet. Oh. Then the SAD is what you get. It's perfect for optimizing cost for commerce portability yeah, yeah commerce industrialized food production not for, system not for wellness but so. absolutely not for wellness or longevity or vitality or right. any of these other things or not having ibs right so if somebody then has ibs to what degree is the industrialized food production system to blame for that and i would say like you said if we're just going to guess i'm putting in number one and so then this individual has to decide well i I can't buy my food there, even though it's way more optimized for price and convenience and Mm -hmm. all these things, but not for your wellness. That framework and saying it that way through the recognizing industrialized food production system and stepping out of that is so hard. And of course, there's a scale because you don't have your own garden. You don't have a cow in your backyard. You buy your food at the grocery store. Yeah. So you have to just think about it and make choices depending upon what your goals are. So IBS, number one, I'd say, what kind of food are you putting in there? And close, and number two, I'd say, what's going on in your mind? So <clears throat> stress at work, stress at home, um, 20%, this is Michael Pollan, 20% of all meals are eaten where? In your car. More than 40% are eaten where? In front Watch of one of those. Sure. So now we've got more than 50% of meals that are eaten or I'm your brain is somewhere more. else. Well, these days they're, in post COVID, I, I, well, yeah. I, I, I bet Netflix and the, the, the changing cultural phenomenon. Yeah. My family's done more. I think you'd say your family's done more in front of the screen, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and that's not bad. It's like people say, well, I find it relaxing. I find it this. And I, I, I get it. But remember, it, you are optimizing for entertainment. You're not optimizing for you, your gut isn't well, missing TV. Well, to go to the, unfortunately, what we call an extreme and imagine having your breakfast on a beach, watching the sunrise with the birds chirping and the waves lapping, and it's just you. And there's nothing to look at other than that. And you're thinking about chewing your food. Well, getting all that saliva mixed in there, actually tasting the food, savoring that swallowing that taking a bite and putting your fork down which we still have to tell some of the kids to do take a bite put your fork down chew it till it's mush and to go in there and to breathe deeply i mean yeah that we just don't it has no 50 percent of everybody that heard this is thinking how boring oh, yeah. i could watch a show i could get some emails done i, 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 I <laughs> not saying that's what i do <laughs> just but but i get it i mean I, I've, yeah. I've learned that and so you know us again we have the benefit of lunch together you know three to five times a week and we go out in the deck uh when we when it's warm enough look out at pike's peak and <sighs> take that deep take breath. breath we do the same thing at what well, we do it every single night we gather in the kitchen we do our buffet style at this point since there's so many people and hold hands and pray and the first part of the prayer is just the same thing <sighs> So God, that, thank that, you that we're here. That is, 
even in the clinic, I am specifically, and you would be surprised at the amount of people that they get it when I say that, and I give it to them as a prescription. I want you to do this, like take this, take that. But especially with reflux, which is on the upper side of that IBS with people getting heartburn and that kind of thing. Um, and say, okay, as a, as a prescription, you've got to prepare your mind and your mind gut to eat. And so take that deep breath as a prescription, put it on a clock, one minute of gratefulness for the food of contemplating, where did it grow? How did it get to, you know, that logistics of the commerce? So how did it get to your table? And the, which is going to sound hoodoo guru and, you know, mystic to some people, but my gosh, how, if you got a Bible, go back and they sat down with the food and they thanked the provider that created the food and that allowed them to have this abundance that some days they didn't have any of, and they were grateful. And it was an event. We have food. Which is another missing piece in our own mindset and awareness. We don't have any days behind us where I had to do without. Not one single day have I been deprived. Yeah. When has humanity ever said that for multiple generations in a row? My parents weren't deprived. My kids aren't deprived. That's my great. You know, my grandparents were working in the depression, but they had jobs. They really, they did pretty well. Mm -hmm. So maybe great grands. Well, right, right now, if you literally in our town cannot eat, you can walk down to someplace that'll hand out food. The worst possible food. But did I tell you about Ryder in the high school? Huh. So, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. About the, the lunch the, foods or something. The, well, so the confusion with COVID in the public schools and, you know, they're, they're set up to provide meals for some families and that kind of thing, but the kids aren't coming. So they have all this food and all this money. So right before winter break, he came out, no kidding with the natural grocery size grocery bag full of hot pockets. Mm -hmm. the worst possible everything. Mm -hmm. And, and that's their normal lunch fare at the school. It's, you know, reformulated pizza and burger and hot pockets and those kind of things, which is this is processed food. Yeah. And so even in our, our, our system is now delivering that through the schools because it's optimized for cost, mm -hmm. convenience, portability, and, and logistics. So I'm not looking at the school and saying, shame on you. And how dare you? I'm looking at our entire culture and system. And this unique individual named Donna has IBS mm -hmm. and somebody else has something. And, and that system is, I would say the number one contributor. And then the second one is the fact that we, we don't eat with preparation to eat. No. We eat on the go. We eat with, without a Well, mindset. and then we can get into, you know, the, the amounts. I mean, how much are you stuck? How much are you taking in a bite and trying to <laughs> swallow down your gullet? How fast are you doing that? How, you know, we, we eat like, Pelicans. We, we eat like there's not going to be another meal for some reason, right? Like somebody's going to take uh, it away from yeah, us. Yeah. I, I tell the kids sometimes, okay, guys, seriously, I spent two hours making this. It tastes good. You're eating it so fast. It's almost like you don't want to taste it. It's, it's like, this is castor oil. This You're trying horrific. to get down without it. No, it tastes good. Well then taste it and slow down. Uh, you know? Yeah. So I, uh, so many nuances of food and digestion. And you mentioned, you know, stress, what is the state of Donna? And then we're not picking on you, Donna, but just, you know, what, what is the state of your anxiety overall or around meal times? I mean, my gosh, there's some people that yeah, meal time is stressful because you got to go be with whoever it's at the workplace or it's let's, fear of food or I was going to say, let's, let's say one other layer of stress that's out there is for people who are trying to eat right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they aren't, doing fast food, but there's the sense of, I, I don't know there's if a, I'm, and I am eating right. Yeah, like, is there's this a right fear thing? of food. Is this one going to, yeah. is this going to hurt me? I mean, that's what a terrible place. It's to... becoming a diagnosis called orthorexia. Have I told you that one? Uh -uh. So anorexia Yeah. and think of the word a as atheist. Like I don't believe in anything and, and the rexia means hunger. So these people are no hunger anorexic. They don't yeah. eat. Now that's a psychological diagnosis. But orthorexia, orthorexia, think orthodoxy. Yeah. And orthodoxy means the right way. But, the, but this is back to the, um, man, I'm drawing a blank on, on who did we talk with or what was the topic of, you know, of just training? Oh, no, it was the lady that you had in here about with allergies, who's trying to deal oh, with allergies yeah. and uh -huh. saying, do you have an actual allergy or did you or, have an mm -hmm. emotional, yeah. uh, psychological reaction 
and you, you, they told, you told me the story, I think of the, like the bee, a little girl who, mm -hmm. who got stung by a bee while she's eating an avocado while she's eating an avocado and you know, in, in her parents freaked out and it was a big emotional uproar and she develops an allergy. Was it actually to the beast, to the beast thing or to the avocado or whatever it was, or is it just that emotional response coming back here to foods to how often do we have people who, yeah, the fear of food alone is causing the reaction at this point. I don't know what could they, they may not be able to eat anything without an adverse feeling. So that might be somebody out there. This gets to be more rare, but it will be called multiple chemical sensitivities where people can't, they start to feel shrunken up. Like they go down the cleaning aisle at Walmart and it starts to bother them and they get a headache. And then the next time it's the perfume or soap aisle. And they're like, I can't go down that aisle yeah. either. Or then this food bothers me. And, and that you mentioned that one lady that was, that was here. And I would say that's getting far afield. Okay. And so I don't want people to get confused about that, but it's, it's part of the mystery of the brain body connection and go flip it around the other way. Think of the joy of food, yeah. the emotional release of birthday cake and ice cream and Christmas cookies and whatever happens and the, the warm fuzzy smells of, of all of that and how much joy that it brings that, that, the, which I would say when it comes to food, I would put that number one, like the reason that God gave us this blessing is community mm -hmm. fellowship and and then it's the, a drug. I mean, it causes a reaction. I mean, it, it's it, everything is a drug. I know, by okay, that. But, it, but it causes a positive generally. Sure. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And I don't know that it tastes that whatever I'm going to eat here shortly. It's just, I put it in mouth. I feel good. It's a dopamine hit. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, well, and, and I've got something to do afterwards and I horked it down. <laughs> you said it horked it down. <laughs> yeah. I hate, I hate like a pelican there. And, um, uh, it, the, so this is one of those mysterious areas. And then to bring it back to Donna or somebody who says, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have IBS. I've got gas, ability, constipation, diarrhea. Uh, what do I do? And I'd say, well, think this way, begin to shift what you are eating without fear, lean into it. Well, to, to take IB, to take IBS, if she, you know, if we had a patient and, and, and they fasted a little bit, even, even a day, you know, give your body a break and then went to brown rice, broccoli and chicken or tuna, just, you know, pretty plain stuff. Don't put a bunch of spicy sauces on it, whatever. And you take small bites and you eat it reverently, man, the chances of IBS are going to, are going to plummet. But then you got to look at other stuff too. Cause I can give myself, I can sometimes it's coffee too soon to, to eat or with food will bother me a little bit. You know, so here's an outside again, what outside triggers, triggers, mm -hmm. you know, are there uh, to look at? And then, yeah, you've taught me just to just stress again, overall, just if you are a, a high, not even anxiety, because that sounds negative, but just a high energy person. Sometimes I tend to be that way. And it's not out of anything negative. I'm just, I got a lot to do. It's fun. I'm gonna go exercise hard. I'm gonna work hard. I just have fun. But I'm, I'm constantly running high. And I think that causes me intestinal strife. By not and being bringing it back to your heart rate, if you were also contributing to that with, you know, caffeine over here, alcohol, and yeah. uppers and downers, basically, sure, right? and, you know, yeah. and the confusion of that into the system, and it's just responding to what you're telling. Or, or, or and again, this get, now we can get into the everything. If I'm also trying to run on four hours of sleep a night, mm. uh, you and know. go to a job that you hate, and come yeah. home to a family that's driving you crazy, yeah. And, well, again, from a, from a high level, well, let's go ahead. And she also mentioned allergies. I mean, that's, you know, like so many things, I assume we're at an all time high, just like diabetes and heart disease and autoimmune of, of allergies. People are allergic to more things now than ever. I think that's pretty fair. And especially if you think about it through the youth lens and, and I would put asthma in that category and just sensitivity, then again, to the environment that we're in. And you're right. My grandpa, you know, when he was in school, he was the only one with asthma. Yeah. And now it's 30% of an elementary school will have uh, asthma allergies, have a diagnosis. And that, so seasonal allergic rhinitis that she says kind of is there all the time. So there is clearly, if it's clearly seasonal, then if it's mild, 
then most people are going to do better if they just use three months of Zyrtec or Claritin or something like that. That's okay. If they want to be supernatural about it, then quercetin. There's lots of formulations of quercetin and bromelain and papain and those kind of things that are out there on the, on the supplement side that tends to have helped my family as an allergy family. And a lot of that is genetically related. Um, so allergies exist. They are real. Cat, dog, dust, smoke. Okay. Okay. But I want to, I want to hit it from a high level because I, you know, of course I'm always going to err on the side of personal responsibility. So, so that's an admission. It's not, not going to be fair in this scenario completely. Cause we can also look and go, Oh my gosh, yeah, there's all these you know new chemicals and pollution and all this stuff. That's the causation, the circumstantial environmental uh, causation of these increase in allergies. Now I'm going to go over here and go, no, I, I think it's, or I tend to fall on the side of we are less resilient than ever. And of course you're going to say it's both, I assume, <laughs> uh, but that, but that's the truth. So if we have more allergies, yeah, we are less as humans, less healthy in America yes. at least. And we have more crap. Yes. Yeah. It's so, but to think the way you think, I can't do very much about the pollution that's in the air. Like, I don't have control. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I can, well, in terms of where I live or something like that. Of, 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 of not having that. Well, we're, we're back to the COVID, you know, issue at this point that we're going to get to the point of we can't not be exposed. So you're saying that we have these exposures. We can't. So what do we do? We do error, not error, but we go on the side of personal responsibility. What can I do to give yeah, myself yeah, that, the best that's, chance? That's what I was saying is I can't right now do anything about the quality of air in Colorado. Right, right, right. And if there's a, we had the forest fires and the summer was horrible. Like yeah. that was our worst ever. Yeah. Well, you didn't move to Florida. Mm. So you, but then the question is, okay, can I put a HEPA filter in my house? Can I, what can I do in myself to make myself more resilient so that I can withstand the, the forest fires and, and well, the that air was, quality? That was two things though. That, you, that was a, what can you do to guard yourself from that exposure? One. Uh -huh. And then, then the third piece is then also, what can you do to make yourself more resilient, stronger lungs so you can deal with it? I mean, cause even coming back to the seasonal allergies, I mean, some people have them, some people don't, what can you, I've got a kid, Ian, you know that he's, mm -hmm. he's the one who tends to be more allergic. I'm going to help open or shut that door by how much sugar he eats, That's how right. much sleep he gets. So his stress. Yes. All of the, in, in. To at least minimize it. If we I can't was going to say, now we're it. getting into the, 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 the overwhelming, oh, oh my gosh, every little breath I take is going to tip me towards trigger or it's not trigger. Unfortunately, it's And that's true. true. It is very true. So there again on the big ones, get enough sleep at night, don't stress out, those kind of things, don't eat the processed food. And for Ian, if he chose to do those things, he's going to be more likely to be more reactive. Yeah. And that, and maybe Donna is too. But can you imagine though, that that is, that is where I'm going to say on the personal responsibility side, if you know that every spring you always get allergies, you always start on Zyrtec because you're allergic to what? Cat dog, or, mold. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> okay. But, but if that's it to say that that'd be a great one. We just got out of the holidays. I imbibed, I had fun, you know, now for this spring, for these three months, man, I'm going to take affirmative action. I'm going to try to sleep more. I'm going to try to cut down on my sugar or whatever I'm sensitive to, yep. which for me would be, you know, nightshades and whatever. So where I imbibed in those, I had salsa last night, you know, maybe, maybe now in the spring where I would possibly be susceptible, I try to strengthen my affirmative action again. Yep. And then proactive and then, action. It's, it's, and in the summer, if it, if it usually goes away, then be, be looking forward. I'm going to go to the beach. I'm gonna have fun eating some of those foods that I hadn't because, you know, I'm out of the seasonal yeah, it's, whatever. it's, it's the mitigation between risk and reward of, of nearly everything. Yeah. And you, like you use the example of how, how fast are you going to drive through town? You might get a speeding ticket <clears throat> if it was just left up to you because you think you drive so well, you could do it on 60 miles an hour and I it'd do, be okay. I do drive that well. <laughs> and if you had a dying kid in the back seat on the way to the hospital, you mm -hmm. would be justified, but because the reward and the risk mitigation and all that, you, you choose a pathway. I think most Americans automatically in the 99th percentile drive that way and they don't eat that way. Mm -hmm. They don't go to sleep that way. They don't sit down to a meal that way. They don't uh, mitigate their relationships that way. And that's what that, and that is from a soapbox standpoint, that is so, that is frustrating that we as a culture 
we're in a non-responsibility culture yeah. and I, and we see people and I know you do, and it sounds bad because it sounds judgmental and all this stuff, but we, I can take myself out. I, and I do sometimes at With least I, I'm going to at least yeah. admit it and not give my power away to something else. So when we see somebody go, yeah, man, every, every, uh, spring, man, it just, it takes me out, man. There's times I can't go to work. I mean, it's actually hurting my income and whatever. I sure hope they come up with a pill, a pill at my doctor's exactly. office. That's going to help. This. Yeah. Cause we don't have any normal doc generally saying, Hey, what's your sugar intake? Like what's your stress level? Like what's your sleep? Like what they just prescribe so, a bandit. A great example is, uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours, <clears throat> Mark, and <clears throat> a genetically derived cholesterol risk. Okay. And so he has a genetic, he has a loaded gun. Genetic he's born with a loaded gun that I don't have. And that's, and I don't and, have, and that, I don't have a bolt in that chamber. He does. He, right. So, right. So whoever is out there who walks around in their twenties, thirties, forties, and they've got a cholesterol of 400, right? Like it's not like they eat that horrifically or or any it's familial hyperlipidemia <clears throat> that's a genetically predisposed you know they've already begun their atherosclerotic process and so then over here where i said oh and your insulin is a little bit high now normally to a, a normal person we might be talking about you know don't get diabetes or something like that and i said but to you this isn't a grade of a b and this is a c minus it's because You've already got this loaded gun. You can't jiggle this gun around. You can't uh, put it that's risk reward mitigate. It's not worth the risk of living life in such a way that this goes up, that it's going to pull the trigger over here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on that scale. Everybody has a loaded gun to some degree in some aspect of their life. Nobody lives forever, et cetera, et cetera. So, but he could have said, what do I take for that high insulin? Mm -hmm. What do I take for this cholesterol? That's exactly what our culture preaches to right. us to ask. And this is terrible. I hope he doesn't listen to the show because I was actually with him before he became your patient. I don't know if you remember. Uh, it was a, a, a long night. It's uh, your fault. His cholesterol is a little high. <laughs> long night meeting. <laughs> and I saw him, speaking of insulin, I saw him consume the amount of sugar that came, uh, that went into his, out of wine glasses of uh, fresh fruit juice, you know, fresh squeezed. I mean, the, the, the sugar, the health food. Of, oh my gosh. Fruit juice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would have given me a sore throat, uh, literally, I think that much sugar. And, and then also he had some, you know, some processed bread stuff and whatever that he just didn't know. Of course he does now being with you, but it's, here he is. And he's taking his lifestyle and pulling that. Trip. Oh my gosh. Uh, it, it was so refreshing to me to have somebody say, okay, I own this. I, I don't, I personally choose there's nothing wrong with medicines. I just personally choose to go this pathway to reduce the risk of the of medicines of yeah. side effects and things like that and give my body a chance over here, which the world is going to see as extreme to, to embark on, on, on regular prolonged fasting on top of intermittent fasting and a ketogenic diet and those kind of things. But for him, it's a better pathway than a different pathway, mm -hmm. but he owns it. And we live in a culture that is now saying, uh, well, that's the theme. <laughs> if I could just have a pill, yeah. what would it be? I mean, well, it's, it's, I, cause that's in our own uh, admission. I, that's how we started to think. I'd be happy for a pill for some things too. I would be happy for money for nothing. Can I have a pill that will just take care of the finances? I have a pill that instead instead of that hard conversation with my wife, uh, just, just push that button. <laughs> or, or that was the 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 funny thing that I saw. Why can't we have uh, pinch hitters for that? <laughs> hey, honey, these pants make me look fat. Uh, hey, hey, can I get hey, a pinch hitter over here to answer that question? I mean, we do. We want a pill, and that's the culture that's killing us too, because we're taking away personal responsibility. So back again to you know her issue of allergies. You know what? you know, what are some top? Oh, well, here, allergies are, are classic. It's not my fault. I'm allergic to cats. And or, so, or even worse, the trees. What can I do the, about the, the trees, trees that are yeah. outside my office window? So I would say you're right. It, it, you can't control the trees and you can't control how sensitive you are. Just like you well, can't wait, control the tone hold on, of your skin. Hold on. You can't control how sensitive you are. Uh, you, how sensitive you're born. Okay. You, you can't control how sensitive okay, to the so sun Ian, you are. Your... I, so we had my wife birthed seven children. Of... And Ian is more sensitive. Yes. He did not earn that or right, right, do anything. Right. So that's the predisposition. Right. Now, the way he lives yes. is going to make him more sensitive or less sensitive. 
that analogy that I think is a great one if people can keep it in their heads is there's multiple analogies. The one I use is the submarine. Do you remember that one? Yes. How you're in charge of the depth of your submarine. We all live in a world that's toxic. Submarines live in water. They don't fly. There's no such thing as no pressure. Submarines go into water. Now, if you smoke, you went way, way down there. Yeah. The pressure on your system. And so people who smoke tend to pop off leaks that we call it cancer and whatever else. The people who sleep four hours a night, boy, they get leaky. The people who do cocaine, well, really, really leaky, mm -hmm. like lots of problems. And, and on, you know, modern Americans say, well, I'm not morbidly obese. I don't do cocaine. I have this one vice. It's called caffeine. And, you know, we just excuse these things. And I'm like, oh, it's your choice. How low do you want that submarine to go? Well, I'm thinking about Ian. So let's say it's the springtime comes along. That's when he generally is going to have to get on whatever, uh -huh. quercetin or that. Yeah, and, uh, and so here we are all living. And he, if, if our family submarines are down here at this level, if he, wa he wants to take care of this, again, if you said it's not his fault, it's maybe it's unfair. Bad Either luck, way, if he wants to yeah. keep his health, he's going to have to stay up here and not stay up for the late night uh, movie, not indulge in the third piece of birthday cake. Right. So he has to live at <clears throat> 25 feet while everybody else is living yeah. down there at 50 feet. And that's where we teach him. And, and if he wants to come down here and, and live, then he's also going to suffer the consequences of that. And I'm grateful he knows that. Now he's a teenage kid. And sometimes he does choose to go down and have more pressure and, and suffer from it. But I'm so grateful he at least knows. That's right. You and I have talked about that a lot, just awareness and knowledge. What I'm seeing though is we are in a culture that does not know. And now we're in a culture, remember we talked about that word post-truth? Yeah. We are now in a culture that some people, now we have to pick which word, will not know by choice. Okay. I, sure. I, I will not see that. I, right. I choose not to see that if I eat more sugar, processed food, that it's going to lower my threshold and I'm going to get more allergies or asthma. Mm-hmm. And now, and now they are preset to, it's not my fault. They almost can't take ownership because they don't see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm stymied by that with some people. Like if it sort of goes back to he who has ears to hear, right. hear this, or he who has eyes to see this, it's so hard. And I think not to put too much generalizations on Gen Z, but, you know, those are our kids. That's who we're growing up with. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that. And then even on the medical side where it's, well, it's, it's not my fault. It's the way that things are. Yeah. And the government owes me this. The word of entitlement is health care, whatever that means. An entitlement, a right. And I would say, sure, is well-being, a right. And I say, no, that costs a lot of work. So let's go, we'll, let's end on this for this one. We'll, we'll continue this magic pill and get through some more of the questions, but on this, you know, going back to Ian. So my son, my son, it just turned 16 year old son and he has had more allergies. If, if the kid could get, if the kids are good, could get sick, he would get sick. Get um, he has more allergies. He's real pale, skin more so than the other susceptible to the sun. Um, right now it's so terrible. He's got acne, uh, more than any other kid that I've had. So he's here with his brother, who's 15 months younger as none. And he's got, you know, a, a decent amount and that's unfair. Let's just say it. That'd be culture. So there's his loaded gun. That's not his fault. Um, maybe it's my fault, uh, but either way, it's not his fault. So it's unfair. And if he gets judged for that, I think this is where we get to the cultural aspect where you judge somebody, but he gets judged for that. I sit here as his father and go, okay, or go Ian. And, and I berate him for not being as healthy as his sibling. That is unfair. So that's where we get a lot of this feeling of people who are, I'm not going to accept any blame responsibilities. It's not my fault. That part's not, but he is better off to accept as much responsibility. Before you go to the next okay. one, say all that through the lens of being overweight. Yeah. Okay. Your youngest daughter. Yeah. yeah. Is 
and there again, if you had shamed her, oh, my youngest daughter. And so, uh, you know, for disclosure here, she's uh, adopted and had malnourishment to a significant degree in her first four years. And so now over the holidays, when we all imbibe, and I look around and, you know, maybe somebody says, I, I gained half a pound. I mean, you can't tell. You can tell it in her. Can you? Oh my gosh. She, she, she just, gets it, pudgy. She gets pudgy in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think in addition to bloating, but she gets, she put weight on because. And she, she ought not at that age, the, the metabolic flexibility ought to be. And how much of that is related to those oh, first four she years? Had so much less than everybody. Cause we curtail it. Uh -huh. She had so much less than the norm. My family had more, less than the norm. She had less than that lesser norm than all the other kids. And, and yet still, still, yeah. And that is not so sad, fair, uh -uh. frustrating. It's we, infuriating to me. As her parents, you would, it's infuriating. It's a, and that whatever percentage of the, of our population is now born into this culture that has now shifted. Now, now granted, we don't want to go into a shame culture about overweightness, but now we've gone into the accepted culture. Remember we talked about the we, pictures. We have back to where you were just at though. We do have more people coming into life with uh, more propensity. Yes. Less that the they genetic. No, this is getting out of my field. And so the words aren't going to be the right one, but if we call it genetic drift or if we call it genetic weakness or genetic uh -huh. f f sort of fraying at the edges, we are more susceptible to more but, things than ever before. Then it's the, but it's the double win. We have more people who actually have caused to, to feel like this is not my fault. And we have a culture who's saying it's not your fault. And so we have a, a generation of powerless people. I, that's where I was going. Okay. That's where, and I, and I, we, you and I are gen uh, X, right? And not that any generation is better than any other generation. We just use those terms. The millennial gen Z, culture that's come in through also the influence of the political thing, the financial crash in 2007, eight, nine, uh, this is their, this is the war, the nine 11. That's the war. These are the defining moments of their childhood. Mm -hmm. And the theme through all of that. And now think of 2020 and that what's the defining moment is COVID. Mm -hmm. What was the response? It was a worldwide global response. Who was responsible? the government uh, not, anybody but self not I mean, me but but which to yours is i'm you are not actually responsible for covid you had nothing to do with it no nope. as far as we know <laughs> i am responsible to a degree on how my body's going to respond to covid yeah and that's where i'm worried about our younger people because they're not taught that well and so back to ian and my you know youngest daughter they're being taught that man i'm so sorry I'm so sorry. That's, That's so right. unfair. But from this point on, the responsibility is yours to deal with it as well or as unwell as you want That's and right. to reap the rewards or the consequences of that. That's right. I, in, in our lead flow process for the business, for people who want to come in and have a functional medicine doctor, the, I say that word, I'm so sorry. So often yeah. you are in a pit. You didn't jump in the pit and I am, I am so sorry. Yeah but there's no pill. There's no clear algorithm out of this. There is only steps forward in a certain direction. And one of the things that has to happen in order for people to make progress down that pathway is they have to own it. Yeah. And that concept of ownership, especially for <laughs> the young ones. Well, you know, and, and I, and we can, we need to continue this, this uh, getting through other people's comments on a, on a next show, but I mean, what is the magic? There are, to play with it a little bit. There are some magic pills. They're unique to each person. The magic pill for me is figuring out what I am most sensitive to, what is, what takes, what is most prone to take me out and avoiding that. So uh, nightshades, that was a magic pill for me. I, I, I would agree. And, and, and we bounced around on that one for a while. And one of the dangers there is there are some people out there and they don't have a magic pill. It's not, yeah. you got to keep like some people think it's, I just got to keep, I got to find the magic lock key to this lock. There's something out there, the right combination of food, the right, you know, but you do when you, but if you look at your patients historically, I mean, don't a majority of them that you find a few areas of magic pillness, a few areas sure. of man, this is wow. How, yeah. how awesome. We found a primary culprit yeah. that's taking you out. Now it's going to be, probably something that you don't want to stop doing or that's 
frustrating. It's the stress. It's the food. It's the whatever. There's usually the, what I would call nodal points where lots of things are coming in together. Yeah. It's a node. Well, and, the, and like the cascade effect too. You're this, we see that it's causing this, it's causing this. Blah, That's right. Blah. Yeah. So, so somebody resonated with this analogy. It's like you're building a jigsaw puzzle, which I do not like jigsaw puzzles, but my family does. So they're always doing it. And so I probably should It'd be like meditative. It'd be good for you. so boring. Yeah, I probably should. I, I'm bad at it. Like I just, I don't find the pieces. Meanwhile, my wife is putting in piece after piece after piece. I don't, I don't know that I agree with that. I think that you're like me are just so impatient. You want a and result quicker. I don't, I don't like to like cross the I should do it while I eat. <laughs> Slow this thing Take down. a bite and you can't take another bite till you find where that stupid thing goes. Well, so you've built a puzzle. And sometimes there's the puzzle that you build and there's a piece on the floor. Mm -hmm. And it's the dog's back, right? It's not a critical piece. You, it's not like you can't figure this thing out for what it is. But let's go the other way around. What if you're building a puzzle over here and it's like, it's not making sense. It's not working. But then there's that one piece and you put that piece in and they're like, oh, and then 10 pieces flow in right yeah. behind that. That's kind of how I, I, I think for- And you have that experience with patients a lot. Sure. Yeah. And for like with you, that, that nightshade thing, Boy, that was a piece. Yeah. And then after that, six other pieces fell into place. Yeah. So, so it's very difficult. Like somebody else over here can, and I, I would be like, you know, quit worrying about that one piece. We already know that's a dog. You can live life without that puzzle piece. It's an imperfect picture or whatever else, but you've got a big empty spot over here, but it sure feels better to look for that piece, yeah. right? Like people hate to have a, you don't yeah. want to build a puzzle and have one piece missing. Yeah, yeah. So our, our, our tendency is to go look for that thing. And a lot of times it's not, it's, it's not as fruitful as you think it's going to be. Yeah. Well, and, and I, was, I thought you were also going to say, I mean, there's also points where we have brokenness that just can't be That's fixed. Right. If, if you, you have your leg chopped off, it's yeah. going to be chopped off. I mean, you've had some patient, I imagine, who's done everything right, That's taken right. all your stuff, and they still need whatever medication or they're right. still not and able even to perform. Ian, yeah. even, he could be the best he could possibly be and he still needs some Zyrtec. And I'd say, well, at least you didn't need two. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, ha you cannot, we're not talking about optimum wellness where there's no, where there's perfect optimumness yeah. that never exists. Yeah. So it's that wise leaning. And this is where the teenagers have trouble. It's like, well, is it worth my effort <laughs> and then we're in the motive. My other podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you, there you go. Uh, okay. Well, good stuff. Yeah.